Okay, I'd like to read an article from Charisma Magazine, which is a Christian magazine. Now, I don't stand with Charisma Magazine on a lot of issues. First of all, I do not follow this Christian Zionism idolatry that America has brought to the world. So my views follow closely with the DVD that you can watch on YouTube called Marching to Zion. Marching to Zion, I highly recommend that DVD if you can take the time to watch that. That is a true biblical account of how we should uh, view the modern day state of Israel. And if you've seen my video with Barack Obama's birth being to the number of his name to the day that they declared Ben Gurion declared Israel as a nation, May 14th, 1948. You'll see that this was, it has the number of the beast all the way through it. So let me read this article because this is a strange thing to read on Charisma, but it's a fantastic article written by a guy called Kelly McDonald Jr. And it's entitled, What Would Pope Francis' Second Visit to Jerusalem Mean for Re Revelations Impending in Times Showdown? Recently, it was reported that Pope Francis is considering a second trip to Jerusalem. This article was written 27 September, roughly. While we do not know the details of the visit, it is believed that his key focus will be peace in the Middle East. Could this be the beginning of the covenant with many from Daniel 9.27? Question mark. Only time will tell. Of course it's not. Of the many implications from this visit, it reminds us of a coming showdown in Jerusalem that is depicted in the book of Revelation. So this guy's insight and discernment is spot on. That's why I'm reading this article, because I thoroughly enjoyed reading this. The truth contained within. The book of Revelation is a book of opposing entities. In Revelation chapter 6, we see a white horse that seeks to conquer. In Revelation 19, we see Jesus on a white horse riding to conquer the enemies of God. In Revelation 12, we have a pure woman. But in Revelation 17, we see a harlot. In Revelation 11, we see two true prophets sent from God. In Revelation 13, we see two beasts. The second beast is a false prophet who causes people to worship an image. These beasts will wage war against God's people and all who refuse to submit to idolatry. The second beast of Revelation 13 has uncanny similarities to the Pope. Wow. In Revelation 13, 11 to 18, a beast comes up out of the earth. Just as Adam came from the dust of the earth, this beast represents a person. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. This beast has horns like a lamb, but it speaks like a dragon. Jesus said that out of the abundance of the, mouth, the heart, the mouth speaks. Matthew 13, 12, 34. Sorry. This human appears to be Christ-like, but it has the intent and heart of the dragon, Satan, the devil. The second beast breathed life into an image or idol and causes people to bow down to it. The Pope outwardly, Pope Francis, the Pope outwardly looks pious wearing white and performing acts of kindness. The danger historically and today is the words spoken by the Pope. In 1095, Pope Urban II told the Crusaders that Christ commanded them to invade the Middle East. He then goes on to say that all who die by the way, whether by land or by sea, or in battle against the pagans, shall have immediate remission of sins. This I grant them through the power of God with, from, with which I am invested. Oh, what blasphemy. That's, I've added that. <laughs> but only God can grant forgiveness of sins. 1 John 1, chapter 1, verse 5 to 10. In September 2015, let's recall back to that. A lot happened in that month. Obama and Pope Francis met at the White House. Pope Francis addressed the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals on the 25th of September, 2030 agenda, right? The current Pope, in September 2015, the current Pope said that Christ's life, humanly speaking, ended in failure, the failure of the cross. What? Paul said the cross was proof of Christ's triumph. Colossians 2.15, in 2016, the Pope said that our family life must be guided by conscience, not dogma. Yet Paul informed us that we should be led by the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, verses 1-14. In addition to these statements, the Catholic Church advocates the use of idols and images as instruments of worship. This mirrors Revelation 13. Not even Islam advocates idols and images. Wow. Not even Islam advocates idols and images. The Pope also wears a garment called a pallium, which is made from lamb's wool. Right, I would back that up a bit. Not even Islam advocates idols and images. That is a little wrong. 
the Mecca stone, the stone in Mecca that they walk around is a six-sided cube. Okay, what's well, a cube? Just look up 216 and you'll see that uh, a cube, yeah, 216, a cube is a cube six, um, six squared. Six squared, anyway. Read Wikipedia 216. The Pope also wears a garment called the pallium, which is made from lamb's wool. Let's consider these details. The Pope always dresses in white, wears a garment made from lamb, from a lamb, advocates images and idols, and speaks against God's will. The Pope is the second beast of Revelation 13. What? He has written here, the Pope is the second beast of Revelation 13. He will call down a false fire from heaven that imitates the real fire from God. Revelation 13, 13. Amen. What truth that is. I've done a video recently saying that Pope Francis will call fire down from heaven at some point when the two witnesses appear. That is just amazing. During the Great Tribulation, the Pope is going to face a major showdown in Jerusalem. The two witnesses of Revelation chapter 11 will be God's true prophets during this time. They will tell the world to turn to God Almighty. There is some debate as to the identity of the two witnesses. We know that they are prophets and that they are presently in heaven waiting to be sent to earth. Revelation 11, 3-4. Most ministers would agree that Elijah has to be one of the two witnesses. I agree with that too. First of all, he is specifically mentioned in Malachi as returning to earth before the return of Jesus. See, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreaded day of the Lord. Malachi 4, 5. Now, I've done a video in this last year, 2018, where I believe now that John the Revelator will be the second witness, according to Scripture. Little clues that are there. C continue on with this article. Revelation 13, 5 to 6, describes the two witnesses as being able to send fire from their mouths and cause drought. Elijah manifested these signs as well. He called down fire from heaven, 2 Kings 1, and caused a drought to occur, 1 Kings 17. Some believe that Enoch is the other witness uh, since... Among other details, he has never died. These two witnesses prophesy for three and a half years. That is true. Once, or 1260 days, 42 months. Once that time is finished, they will be killed in Jerusalem by the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, the first beast, the little horn, Barack Hussein Obama. The Pope and the beast government will put, them, put an end to them. However, they will be resurrected and called to heaven. As we see... As we see this Pope or any other Pope preparing to visit Jerusalem, we are reminded of these two prophetic, powerful prophetic chapters, Revelation 11 and Revelation 13. We learn of true prophets that have the true fire of God that battle the false fire and words of the Pope. I encourage you all to seek the true fire that comes from God alone, even more so as we see the day approaching. Wow, what an amazing article to read of all things on Charisma News, which is quite corrupted in what it presents. Standing with Israel. Yeah, right. Not according to my Bible. Thanks for listening.